we want to determine if the given infinite series converges or diverges. Let's start by applying the nth term divergent test, which is a test to see if the nth term approaches zero. By the nth term divergent test, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n doesn't equal zero, we can quickly determine that this series is divergent. So we want to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is natural log n, divided by n minus one. Notice as n approaches infinity, this would be the indeterminate form because we'd have infinity divided by infinity. So we'll have to apply L'Hopital's rule to determine this limit, which means this limit is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. Well, the derivative of natural log n with respect to n would just be one divided by n, and the derivative of n minus one would just be one, leaving us with the limit as n approaches infinity of just one divided by n, which is equal to zero. So because this limit equals zero, the nth term divergent test does not give us any information, so we have to apply a different test to determine convergence or divergence. So looking at a sub n, and then going back and taking a look at the test that we know we can use to determine convergence or divergence, notice how none of the tests from one, two, or three stand out as an obvious choice, which leads us to either the direct or limit comparison test. And for this example, we'll use the direct comparison test. So let's review the direct comparison test before we apply it. One of the challenging parts about the direct comparison test is we have to decide what series to compare it to and also determine whether we want to compare it to a diverging series or a converging series. So the direct comparison test tells us given the summation of a sub n and the summation of b sub n such that a sub n is greater than zero and less than or equal to b sub n, meaning the terms from the sum of a sub n are less than or equal to the terms of b sub n, then if the summation of b sub n, the larger series converges, then the sum of a sub n, the smaller series also converges. But if a sub n, the smaller series diverges, then b sub n, the larger series also diverges. So for comparing it to a converging series, then we want b sub n to come from the converging series, and if we're comparing it to a diverging series, we, we want a sub n to be the diverging series. So going back to our example, we have to select a series that we know converges or diverges to perform the direct comparison test. This is not always easy to do, but in this case, I think we'll compare it to the sum of one divided by n, which we know diverges from the p-series test. So we're going to compare to the sum of one divided by n, which diverges by the p-series test with p equal to one. Because we're comparing the given series to a diverging series, we want to show that the terms of this series, the given series, would be larger or equal to the terms in the diverging series. That's important to recognize because if we go back to the direct comparison test, we want a sub n to be the known divergent series and b sub n to come from the given series. So this is going to be the summation of b sub n and then the summation of one over n is going to be equal to the summation of a sub n. So we want to show that zero is less than a sub n, the known diverging series, which we want to be less than or equal to b sub n. So again, we want to show the terms of the given series are greater than or equal to the terms of the diverging series. Or we want to show that zero is less than one divided by n, less than or equal to natural log n, divided by n minus one. If we can show this is true, then the given series will also be divergent. Well, looking at just the denominators, notice how this fraction here has a smaller denominator, 
which if the numerators were the same, would make this fraction greater than one divided by n. But since our denominators are not the same, we're going to go ahead and use a graphing calculator to compare these values. So we're going to enter a sub n into y1 and b sub n into y2. Now I've already done this. Notice how we used x instead of n, and now we'll use the table of values to compare these terms. Again, because we know that the summation of one divided by n is divergent, if the values of natural log n divided by the quantity n minus one are greater than or equal to one divided by n, then we know the given series is also divergent. So I'm going to go ahead and press the second graph. We'll notice starting at x equals two, the values of b sub n are greater than the values of a sub n, as we can see comparing y sub two and y sub one. And this is true for all values of n approaching infinity. So by the direct comparison test, the given series is divergent. So by the direct comparison test, since the summation of one divided by n is divergent by the p-series test with p equal to one, and zero is less than one divided by n, which is less than or equal to natural log n divided by n minus one for n greater than or equal to two, the given series is also divergent. Okay, I hope you found this example helpful.